day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. You're going to take some. That's the whole point, though, right? Is that the only way I'm going to change, whether I'm a drug addict, whether I'm a fornicator, the only way I'm going to change is through the spirit becoming spiritually minded. I'm my If I try to change based on my own ability, based on my cardinal way of thinking, I'll never change. Yeah, that's why he's saying yeah. that we want to bring people. I'm saying, Jimmy, if you want, if you want to deal with a homosexual, you want to deal with a fornicator, you want to deal with an adulterer, you want to deal with a liar, you want to deal with an unforgiver, any of these things, is to get people to point to becoming more spiritually minded, opposed to cardinally minded, because you're only going to change through the spirit. That's that's the whole point. I'm saying is is if. If, like you said, Elder, I like to say, if if I be lifted up, Ooh. we should lift everybody up toward Jesus. Okay. Uh, I, I, what, I, what, what I'm uh, thinking think I'm getting at this, not, uh, you're talking about communicating an adultery. What I'm getting at is my ex wife is still alive. Right. Okay. I struggle with the fact that I'm married again. Am I in a, living in adultery? That's what I struggle with. Would I be living in adultery? That's what I struggle with. Right. But that, that's what I'm saying. You know what? I like what you're saying here. And, and if you go by the scripture we just read, and if I'm in the flesh, yeah, that's the law. You're talking about the law. You see, with that, Christ fulfilled the law. So th therefore, I'm not held in bondage of the law anyway. If you get married, you get married. You're not under the law. You're not living under the law in Christ Jesus. None of us are. So you're not, if you get married again, you're not a fornicator based on Jesus. So I'm saying that's why he says spiritually, you're not under the law in Christ Jesus. But if you if you if you cardinally you are under the law, I think that's what it said, right? To be cardinal, what does it elder, what does it bishop it says about the law? Where is it? It's in here, right? It's in the scriptures somewhere here. <laughs> Be carnally minded is sin and death. Yeah. yeah, because verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither the can be. So then the data in the flesh cannot please God. And all that I can do please God in the flesh by the law is through the flesh. But you're not in you're not on the law. I'm not on the law. I I I am not under the law. If I'm under the law, I'm, I'm a, I, we fell under the law. That man, that rich man, that rich ruler came and said, what must I do to be saved? And the man got a 90, Brother Bell, and Jesus said, you still lack something. Okay. So how can I be held under the law? Let me, uh, let me ask you a question then. I'm just curious. I, I, let me pull my notes up because I said uh, I went back to something we talked about last week. I'm just curious. I want to know. Uh, let me let me look at this verse. <laughs> Which one? Uh, let me pull my let me pull my paper up. Okay, Romans chapter seven. <laughs> right. Verse right. number one. <laughs> okay, one. There you go. That's easy. Release from the law. That's the subtitle. Of it. Let me ask you a question. I'm just curious how. Oh, I'm like Jesus. Now, how I read this now? <laughs> go ahead. Here we go. It says, uh, he says, No, you're not, brother, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives. Now, let me ask you a question. What does that say? I like that. It says, it says like, as, as long as I live by the law, as long as I live in the flesh, then I am subject to the law. And and, and then and the fact is I have to die to me. I, I mean, this is me. You, you die to self. Even Paul said, I die daily. So you got to die. As long as you got the law's dominion, I like to say, no, ye not, no, you're not brethren. But I speak to them that know the law. Yeah. 
How is how that the law has dominion? That's why Christ redeemed me from his law. Okay, so can you can you can you state that law? Can you state that truth that is presented in that verse? When you boil it down, what is the truth that he's telling you in that verse? That I did. Truth is that you gotta continually die with Christ. And you die, that's you know, that's what baptism represents too, right? Death, right? Die to self. Okay, now when I went back and read this verse, I went I went back through the chapter, went back through all the verses, to make sure, because this is serious stuff. It is. And what I've come to understand is this. When I looked at this text and I, and I kept looking, I said, what is it really telling you? Because, listen, who gave the law? Moses brought the law. <laughs> God said it to Moses. <laughs> when did the law originate? And God, says, God did it. <laughs> this is God. The law is the very, in, in Moses' case, it, it, in the Old Testament, that book was on those tables of stone. The scripture said it was written by God Himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let me tell you how I read this whole thing. <laughs> I said what this text is really trying to tell you is that as long as you've only been born once, you are under the dominion of God through law. Yes. But the dominion is God. Yes, sir. The instrument that he's using is law. Yes, sir. Now he says, marriage then <laughs> has, as far as God is concerned, has a law associated with it. It falls under this, it falls under this dominion. Yes, sir. Now we're talking about God's dominion over you through law regarding marriage. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But then he says, but in Christ. We're talking about God's dominion over you in Christ. Come on. Through faith. Yes, sir. What I'm saying to you is that all God did is switch the instrument for dominion. Come on. That is why he's adamant that nothing else can have dominion over you. Come on. If sin has dominion over you, Christ is your Lord. Come on. So he goes on to say, look, but you, 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 he, he put you to death so you could be married to another. So he brings you right back under dominion. <laughs> pulls you, he pulls you right back in under dominion. All he did was change the instrument. It, it, God is very adamant that he must have dominion over you if the kingdom is going to be realized in the earth. Yes, sir. Without dominion, we just run in our mouths. Uh huh. No, no, no. And, 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 and we, I like that. You better figure that. that. Go ahead. <laughs> well, with, that, with that being said, what scripture do we apply to Brother Bell's situation? I mean, specifically, what scripture can we apply? And uh, I'm just trying to make a connection not, myself. I like this stuff. Finish that. <laughs> well, in brother, listen, in, in Brother Bell's case, what you have to, the first assessment you have to make is this. Was Brother Bell saved when he got married? That, that's, that's the clincher right there. Brother, was he saved? Yeah, but he went down to that altar and entered into that agreement with his wife. And was his wife saved? Bell, you, you still there? Yes. Bell, you still there? I mean, Bobby, you still there? His mic is muted. Uh oh, I believe he and his wife were saved initially when they got married. Well, no, no. What I'm saying, no, I'm here. I'm here. Now, what I'm saying, that's a good question. I'm thinking because I was told when I was uh, back in like six, seven, seven years old, uh, I was saved. Uh, we went to the church and then we did the little over of and I was saved. I didn't really, I didn't really learn a lot until, uh, yeah. about the. About the, the good book myself until later in life. Yes, sir. and uh, I knew a lot of things that I was taught in church, but uh, I've learned a, a whole lot of things since I've been here. Uh, since I got here to Georgia, and uh, from uh, even Pastor B, and, and, and especially I've learned more from these meetings here that we have since I started being with you guys. Yes, but uh, 
Because you guys, you guys uh, showed me a lot of things that I, I didn't even know. So uh, the question is about whether I was saved or not. That I was told I was saved. I had I had trouble. Uh, I even have trouble now. Let me answer this question. Mm -hmm. Have you had the conviction to have to go back and accept Christ and be rebaptized? Have you had that conviction? Have you have you have you ever been baptized again since then because you felt that back then what you had was not mm -hmm. authentic and genuine? Yeah. No, I have not been baptized since then. Okay. Nope. I have, I have for uh, 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 re uh, how you say, uh, rededicate. The one that says, uh, uh, if you believe in the uh, uh, believe in God, you shall be saved. Because for the longest, I said I believe, but I wasn't sure I believe. You, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. I totally do. I think he, he didn't, he didn't, in his heart, he I'm didn't. I'm curious really to understand the difference between being saved or not and and divorcing. I, I just wanted to hear the end of that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, well, well, I'll clearly that two, two unbelievers that come down and enter into a covenant, it's, it's really, look, God, will honor, God honors the marriage. But he tells he tells he tells the man if he's got a, if a man gets saved and his wife is unsaved, he says if that woman wants to stay, all well and good. But if she wants to leave, all, all well and good. good. Because an unbeliever is not under any kind of obligation to God. <coughs> okay, let's go ahead and continue the conversation. Let's just say both of them were saved. Now go on, continue where you were going to go when you asked the question. Were they saved at the time they entered into marriage? This marriage. Let's just say they were. Now go ahead and look. And now that so you know that answer, that the time they entered into right. that relation, that into that covenant with God. Now the scripture goes on to say now that the only way out of that covenant is that if your wife is unfaithful to you, or you are unfaithful to her, if you go out, if you, if you, if you, if you know for a fact that your wife committed adultery against you. The scripture is clear that except for the case of fornication, that that covenant is sealed before God. But in the case of fornication, God grants you the, God grants you the grace to, to, to end that marriage. Okay. He doesn't well, demand well, that you end well, it, well, but he grants you the grace to end it. So, so if you got two saved folks, And there is no adultery. Then I don't see anywhere else in scripture where there is any allowance for for that marriage to be uh, dissolved. And here, here's why. See what we don't understand is 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 the significance of what marriage really indicates. You see. Your relationship with God is really abstract apart from some kind of tangible relationship with another person. That's why it says, if a man say he loves God and hates his brother, he a liar. Yeah. Because on one side, your love of God has to have the workings of God evidenced in you to prove your love for God in some relationship with another human being. That's why you can't do Christ by yourself. That's why you're part of your member of a body. Okay. Uh, my question was, what if, what if they both committed adultery? Yeah, it's broken. Yeah, broken. I mean, you do when you look at it. Yeah, I think he's one. But the, in a case like that, we're broke. Have have uh, in accordance with the, the the law, then they both have basis for uh, for divorce. Uh, the only the other side of the coin was that if neither one had, then they would be separated in accordance with Paul until they could reconcile, and then they would come back together. But they would have been required to be uh, celibate up until the time that the issue was resolved. But uh, as far as both 
parties committed fornication, then I mean the contract was broken. And either it would appear as though either one of the parties would have the right to 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 leave the 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 the, uh, the covenant. If, if there's unless unless I'm missing something, anybody got anything else on that? Because that's 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 as far as I can I can see. Well, I was I wasn't approaching that thing from a if I read the the Roman, mm -hmm. I wasn't approaching that thing from a law from a from a mosaic law standpoint. I was approaching that thing from a dominion of God over man in Christ. Because see, once you come into Christ, you, you're not under the law, but you're still under the dominion of God. And that is why, that is why, <clears throat> that's why Jesus is teaching this thing. Yeah. And that is why in Ephesians chapter 5, he come back and address this thing when he, when he says, look, this very thing really boils down to your relationship with Christ. Yeah. So I, I wasn't talking from a lost, uh, uh, a mosaic law standpoint. I'm saying that once you are saved, and brought under the dominion of Christ, then the marriage bond. Listen, it's permanent. if the enemy, if the enemy can get your marriage bond with your wife, why would he not think he can get your bond with, with if, he, if he get the if he can get the marriage bond with your wife? Why would he not think he can get your relationship with Christ? The the, 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 the reason that. I would, I would, I interjected that because I think it was Paul that actually made that statement, and Paul's preaching into the New Testament. He's he's past the, I mean, a resurrection ascension of Christ. He's actually preaching to the churches concerning this marriage at that point, and he's the one that makes the provision. I think uh, concerning being able to separate until it was resolved and come back together, and yeah. also he's the one that yeah. put in whether or not they would. They to could. avoid the boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's always, I mean, <laughs> re reconciliation is always the issue. You can always do that. And I think in, in, in the new, under Christ, because that Old Testament, I don't even know if that was the allowance, but I think in the New Testament under Christ, you can reconcile regardless if that was the intent. You know, I think I think I think from obvious perspective, then I believe that uh, if that basically what we're saying, if there's been uh, if there's been adultery committed on either side, both sides, or either other side, then yeah. the, the 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 authority or the right to 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 be divorced and remarry is definitely coming into play, and you're therefore not condemned or living in adultery if you remarry after that because of the fact that there was uh, the contract and the relationship was dissolved right. by that by that act of fornication. But I want to say one thing to that that, that that I said, and I think it's very, very important in that God gave us these things. He compared the temple, uh, this physical temple to our bodies. Marriage also was a representation of something bigger than that. It wasn't just so that you would have a woman and you could procreate. He was showing us or teaching us about a relationship. And we began to understand things about him and us based on the things that he've allowed us to engage in as well. So oftentimes when we have these conversations about certain things, then it's important for us to understand what does this relationship or this sin or this particular situation, what does it represent at the higher level where God was trying to, to give us options or give us these things? What did it represent to him? Then that gives us a better understanding of what it means now and what it represents. Therefore, just like you brought up about the touching of the ark when it fell or entering into the Holy of Holies that you weren't supposed to, how you dropped dead and things of this nature, how you dropped dead because that was his temple. And there were certain things that you didn't even play with and you could you can't sugarcoat it because it was a day by him. Then if we look at it from that perspective, then we look at this other situation. It gives us a better understanding of what he's talking about when he says that your body is a temple of God. So we understand this thing because of what it represented. We understand marriage and what we have, but we have to understand what it represented, that relationship, what it represented. And so oftentimes we have to look back at the things that it was supposed to teach us and give us an understanding about to really be able to understand the situation specifically now that may be something in the natural. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
that is why that is why in the Old Testament you often find God calling Israel of judging Israel as an adulterer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, but Bishop, what about this one? I was looking at this, this is scripture also, I think Brother Bear was using, or some people use, is that this first Corinthians chapter seven. You know, what I was stuck on is one piece here, verse seven, I mean, chapter seven, about for verse 15. What does that, when they say unbelieving, if you, if you uh, don't want to follow the things of God, are you, does that mean unbelieving or does that mean saved? You're a saved person or you're an unbelieving person or you're a saved person that does not believe in anything? No, this <laughs> is, this, I think that's a, this is an unsaved person. Uh-huh. Meaning that, I agree with that. And, and, and therefore that unbelieving husband or wife, if they depart, let them depart. Well, that's what he's talking about. That's why he asked the question, was he saved at the time of, uh, Getting into the relationship or not? 